Would you like to go to Mars? Do you prefer to not suffocate? Well, you better bring one of these. Moxie. A steady supply of oxygen all the time, most of the time. An experimental Moxie is currently on its way to Mars aboard the Perseverance rover and today we will take a detailed look at the technology that is supposed to make breathing on Mars possible. Welcome to Mars Support by Vernum. MOXIE stands for Mars Oxygen In-Situ Resource Utilization Experiment, which is a fancy way of saying that you are using resources that you found on-site, in this case Mars, to produce oxygen. It is also a great reason to never use the whole name again and stick with the acronym instead. The Martian atmosphere is composed almost entirely of carbon dioxide, CO2, which you cannot breathe, obviously. However, in CO2 there is oxygen right there, locked by chemical bonds. So MOXIE uses electrolysis to rip the bonds and split CO2 into oxygen and carbon monoxide. So far, this is the most promising way to make oxygen for any kind of human outpost, whether it will be underground, inflatable, 3D printed or glass domes. Moreover, rocket engines need liquid oxygen, so in order to reuse the rockets and possibly get back home, you need to have a reliable way to produce it. The biggest advantage is that you can just put the MOXIE down and let it work. No additional resources are needed, since CO2 is all around you. The other product, carbon monoxide, has potential uses as well. It was proposed as a convenient fuel for early surface transportation on Mars, or it can be combined with hydrogen into methane, the fuel that the new upstart rocket engines seem to like. The MOXIE on Perseverance is 200 times smaller in scale than the MOXIE that would be used for human settlement. The full-scale MOXIE would be able to produce 2 kg of oxygen per hour, which is enough to support two colonists with some leftover as a backup. It is electrically demanding process, and to reliably produce this amount of oxygen, the colony would require an estimated 25.1 kW of power. Taking into account dust storms, distance from the sun, and other potential losses, this would translate into needing 200 square meter solar panel array, according to NASA. This is quite an optimistic estimate. The solar cells aboard Inside Lander currently hold efficiency record for solar generated power on Mars, almost 30%, and even using this cutting edge technology would require at least 250 square meter solar array. All of that for only two colonists. It is safe to say that to see any significant human presence on Mars, we either have to ship a lot of MOXIEs and solar panels, or the technology needs to improve a lot. Which is exactly why NASA is doing this experiment, to see what the improvements could be. The experimental MOXIE will produce only 10 grams of oxygen per hour, and will use 350 watts, which is all of the power the rover can supply. Alright, now how does all of this actually work? If you ever wondered, you might have come across this image. It's been used widely, from various news journals to Wikipedia. And it is a lie. It comes from very early in the development and shows one possible design using cryogenic cooling to compress the CO2. It was never used, since NASA chose a simpler, more reliable proposal. So let's dive deep into the technology of the MOXIE and take apart its actual design and parts. The construction is made out of cold, provide thermal insulation, protecting the rest of the rover. The most important parts are inlet with filter, scroll pump, solid oxide electrolysis or SOXI assembly and sensor panel. The filtering is done by HEPA filter. That is the same technology that might be in your vacuum cleaner or air purifier. Most parts of the MOXIE have no significant problems with a little bit of dust. Instead the biggest concern is the possibility of pressure drops. HEPA filters provide sufficient filtration with limited degradation over the allocated operating time. However, for larger designs that would have to operate longer, dust loading on the filter could cause significant enough pressure drop to endanger throughput. This means that MOXIEs used for outposts and settlements would either have to be maintained periodically or would have to use different filtration methods. The atmosphere drawn in is 95% carbon dioxide, 3% nitrogen and 2% argon. The pressure is only 7 millibars, about 150 times less than atmospheric pressure here on Earth. Since MOXIE will be running in late morning and early afternoon, the average temperature of the Martian air would be around 0 degrees Celsius. The suction is provided by the scroll pump. It works by trapping and pumping or compressing pockets of air between the scrolls. The top scroll is rotating up to 3500 times a minute. This feeds the system with about 83 grams of carbon dioxide per hour. The amount of CO2 is the biggest limiting factor in producing oxygen on Mars. 
the pressure increases to 0.7 bar. This amount of compression significantly increases temperature since compressing gas heats it up, but this is regulated using various means to a maximum of 70 degrees to protect the compressor. Scroll pump possesses several great features for Moxie. It is mechanical and does not rely on a lot of fragile electronics. It has few moving parts that could break and is energy efficient. The compressed gas then moves into heat exchanger. Since the electrolysis occurs at high temperatures and power is limited, the gas is preheated by recycled heat from the electrolytic stack. Solid oxide electrolysis SOXI, assembly is where the magic happens. It houses the SOXI stack and provides protection and insulation. The thermal shell we see houses two heaters that heat the stack to 800 degrees Celsius to enable the chemical reaction. The ceramic electrolyte becomes a source of oxygen ions at this temperature. Without this, nothing would happen. The SOXI stack is made out of two five-cell stacks held together by end plates and separated by mid plate providing structural stability. The interconnected plates are composed of a chromium iron yttrium or CFY alloy. The properties of this alloy can be tuned to precisely match the thermal characteristics of the electrolyte. This results in uniform expansion and contraction across the SOXI stack preventing leaks or structural fatigue. Underneath the end plate lies the first glass seal used to separate cells. Directly beneath the glass seal is the first cell, which consists of the anode, electrolyte and the cathode. SOXI is a reverse or regenerative power cell. It uses electricity to generate fuel and oxygen. In this case, the electrolysis splits CO2 into carbon monoxide and oxygen. The cathode is yttria stabilized zirconia doped with nickel to catalyze the reaction. The nickel strips one oxygen atom from CO2, which then travels through the porous cathode to the solid ceramic electrolyte. The electrolyte is scandia stabilized zirconia, which is able to conduct oxygen ions at high temperatures using direct current. The proprietary perovskite anode is again porous and allows for the oxygen ions to recombine into molecular oxygen. This is all closed by another glass seal. Oxygen, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide come out through the heat exchanger and are cooled to around 0 degrees Celsius using additional cooling. Currently, the stack is expected to produce 10 grams of oxygen per hour. For perspective, adult human needs more than 3 times as much at 35 grams per hour, so this would be enough maybe for a small dog. The cooled gases then go through the sensor panel to check for quantity and purity of the output. In the end, the gases are released back into the atmosphere at low pressure and temperature to preserve planetary protection guidelines. Now, I touched on some of the downsides already. The HEPA filtration system would have to be maintained and using other filtration methods such as a dust tolerant first stage pump, electrostatic dust removal or cyclonic particle separation would either increase the power demand, resources, weight or decrease reliability. The energy demand especially is of concern as maintaining or even building huge solar arrays would be unfeasible. NASA proposes using radioisotope thermoelectric generator instead, which would be simple yet still only temporary solution. Moreover, MOOCs need to be manufactured on Earth and shipped to Mars. And the SOXI cells have limited lifespan. The anode and cathode undergo decomposition, which slows down the reaction. Considering all this, are there any better alternatives? Oxygen can be manufactured from water, using electrolysis as well. This electrolysis, even though simpler, would require finding, drilling and pumping water, which would most likely have to be purified. This would complicate the process, not to mention the setup needed for such a production chain. Using perchlorates as an oxygen source has similar disadvantages on top of having to work with toxic substances. Of course, we could use photosynthetic plants or algae. Plants can get their own energy from the sun, potentially decreasing the area of solar arrays. But photosynthesis suffers from the same issue of needing sun, which can be in low supply during dust storms. On top of that, plants also need water. Lastly, there are some technologies in development that could rival MOXIE, such as using plasma to split CO2 or the GIAPIS reactor that uses solar wind. However, these are new technologies, only shown to work in a lab, and so far, they cannot rival solid oxide electrolysis in practical terms. It really seems that, at least in the near future, the oxygen humans will breathe on Mars will be made in a box such as this one. I want to thank everyone for the support. After only two videos, I already have 20 subscribers. 
This exceeded my expectations at least 20 times. Now, you might be here thinking to yourself, but wait, you don't have 20 subscribers yet. Was this an honest mistake, or is this some kind of error? We might never find out. But there is a way you can free the next viewer from having to deal with such a conundrum. Thanks.